Hello everyone! I'm so excited for today's video because I'm making Meryl from the game Tower of Fantasy. My first ever SSR character from Tower of Fantasy is actually Meryl. That's why I decided to turn her into a chibi figure. I was really happy when I pulled her because she looks like such an elegant frost queen, but she's really tough and strong as she carries a giant sword called Rosy Edge. I'm making the chibi version of her, but I want to make sure that I'm shaping her torso very nicely since she has a beautiful figure emphasized by her dress. Once I have shaped her legs and torso, I can connect and blend them together so we can move on to the fun part which is making her outfit. Honestly, I don't use Meryl in my main team anymore, but she'll always be one of my all-time favorite characters design-wise. When she fights and twirls with her skirt, it almost seems like she's dancing with her sword as she swings it around. I really like graceful fighters like Meryl in games. Another detail to look out for is the tiny shards at the tips of her skirt. They look like icicles which are perfect because her element is frost. I like that the character designers included a petticoat too. I feel like in general most ice themed characters designs are usually cold and sharp but having ruffles underneath the shards of ice in her skirt balances out the outfit. To me this makes Meryl feel cool but also fragile. Let's start bringing her outfit to life by adding a blue gradient to her legs and skirt. To do this, I added soft pastels in a layering fashion to build up the deep blue color towards the top of her skirt. I also brushed the bottom to finish out the gradient and give it a smoother transition in color. As I mentioned earlier, Meryl has a nice figure and I really wanted to recreate that even in her chibi form here. Piece by piece, her top is close to completion. I'm adding the rest of her dress which has a lot of details including a nice collar around her neck, a made like apron, and a silver belt around her waist. While I was adding the rest of her outfit, I got even more excited because I was able to think of an idea on what to make for her base. A lot of times, I already have a rough plan or vision of what I want the final figure to be, but I get ideas for things to add while I'm crafting the character. In Meryl's case, I was thinking about her special ability in the game that lets her create a ring of ice crystals around her to attack and trap enemies. I thought it would be really cool to add this effect to the base with some resin crystals. I hope you're excited as I am to see how they turn out at the end of the video. For now, let's work on the arms. At first, I decided to try matching the gradient on her arms with just clay, but ultimately decided against it. Instead, I chose to use a two-tone blend as a base before adding soft pastels to build up color. It's always easier to add color instead of trying to take it away later. I added pastels to the arms and hands once they were posed. I didn't do it the other way around because I didn't want to touch the clay with freshly applied pastels. I also made sure to use cling wrap to protect the rest of the figure from extra pastels. For the stole on her back, I decided to make a gradient and ruffle it a little bit before setting it on some cotton fibers so that it dries while retaining the shape. This stole adds more grace to Meryl's movement when she's fighting in the game. Now I'm just adding some finishing touches like her bow, snowflake design on her arms, and her bracelet. Here 
It took me a long time to get the color of her eyes just right. In the game, they're silver and she has an alternative outfit that changes them to a light blue. I went with the reference chibi sticker that the official Tower of Fantasy team sent me. There, she has grayish eyes with a hint of purple or lavender. I really enjoy making long-haired characters and Meryl is no exception because her hair looks very soft and flowy. I guess the most challenging part is making sure that my clay stays clean since her hair is light-colored. Other than that, it was really fun to make her hair look windblown. Since I made the hair in parts, there were lots of blending to achieve the look I was going for. Time to work on her sword, Rosy Edge. To tell you a secret, I have a love-hate relationship with her weapon. It looks so freaking awesome and you get a few seconds of shield. As I mentioned earlier, she also releases an ice ring to attack and trap enemies. However, it can also trap you and your teammates. If anything, it should be called a double rosy edge sword. <laughs> Nevertheless, Meryl is a great tank that can also heal herself. And she's super easy on the eyes, so 10 out of 10. After layering and gluing all the major pieces of her sword together, I added some smaller clay parts using a tweezer and also made the hilt of the sword with its black and silver design. I think I'm getting better at making weapons now, especially after making the three leaders from Fire Emblem Three Houses. You can check those videos out on my channel after subscribing down below. I then painted the final details on her weapon with acrylic paint and a thin brush. I am so excited for this part! To recreate her burst attack as a cool base for Meryl, I made pieces of irregularly shaped crystals by combining UV resin with a mixture of blue and purple acrylic paint. I also added iridescent flakes to get the shimmering texture throughout the crystals. Once I had a good amount of crystals, I then stuck them to an acrylic base with more UV resin and cured it with my UV lamp. As a bonus, I also cured her crown. The only thing left to do now is to add some blush on Meryl and put everything together. That's it for this video! I hope you liked it and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much and see you in the next video!